the question that everyone wants to know is that how do you, you know, what what is the algorithm looking for? It's I've retention. had videos that have done retention. so well, yeah. and then they've just nothing. So retention. So retention. retention. And it's retention for a certain amount of time. Like my biggest video this year was the hook was me sitting in this very chair, and mm. I said total time clapping. Yeah, I saw that one. So that hook. That's a strong hook. Was relatable and going total time clapping cheeks. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I want to listen. Oh, I got to see this. And then I said something that bridged that uh, hook where I said, okay, this is something that can be quite, I said crude, I meant crude. So that was one oh, thing. Yeah, well, it proves the opposite. Yeah, yeah, it proves the opposite. But um, I, I, I built a built up a climax, like mm. uh, built to a climax. No pun intended. Right. Yeah. And and then when I gave them the, the, the golden nugget, which is what I told them that the watch did, um, great idea by the way. People, way. yeah, people Every were... Every dude wrote that down, I reckon. <laughs> but, but, like, in the comments, it was just girls tagging each other. Really? Yeah. Girls tagging each yeah. other? Yeah, yeah. I thought you'd be tagging the boys, like, oh, boys, yeah. come on, oh, let's that, give this a go, this is sick. That as well, but I also accidentally timed it uh, perfectly with Apple's release, Apple's new uh, Apple Watch release. Oh, really? So, yeah, my, um, the Apple Watch hashtag was trending right. at the time, and my video was, like, number one. On the... Of TikTok. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's huge. So, how many views like? I like over six million on both. Wow. So TikTok six million, Instagram six million. Yeah, that's massive. Yeah, that's fine. That's that fine. is true. Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have Adrian Alleberg here. G'day. All the way from Croatia. All the way. Yeah, flew in this morning. Yes. Yep. Yep. And Thanks. my accent is already this good. Amazing. It's amazing. I've just in, yeah, amazing. immigrated today. He's in, he's embraced the culture quickly. <laughs> this is the first ever setup like this. We have the main cam. Where you can see all of us. We have the guest cam. What's up? And then we have my cam. <laughs> and hopefully uh, our good friend Ryan behind the decks, the producer, is uh, switched on by switching on the cameras. So, yeah, see how it goes. If it fucks up, we'll figure it out later. I'm the guinea pig. Yep. If it goes wrong, just delete my podcast and we'll never hear from me again. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, we've had a couple of cracks at it and uh, the main camera conked out for some reason and, you know... But we'll figure it out. It's all work in progress. This is how you, you know. That's it. You're living on the court. That's it. Yeah. So we'll go. We'll just do that one, and then yeah, we're away. So cool. um, thank you for bring, being here. No worries, man. Thanks for having me. We uh, we caught up. Everybody listening at home. Uh, we we got together online and uh, on TikTok. We discovered one another, and then we formally first discovered each other in real life and got to breathe each other's air at uh, the This Is Perth. Mm. Collab, which is a little little baby that we're growing. Yeah. And uh, you still yeah. Still working on that? Yeah. Yeah. Still going. Going well. Going to go for a third kind of uh, installment soon. Nice. Um, we're just trying to tinker out, uh, kink out a few other things that um, we're going to do a different format as well, mm -hmm. not just in the studio, but outside the studio roaming around. Mm -hmm. So see how we go. But uh, lots to do. But um, about you. How did you get here? What do you do? And uh, tell the audience oh, mate, your background. Long, long story, but um, I basically, when I was 18, uh, decided I wanted to give stand-up a go. And it was like a bucket list thing where it was like, I, I felt that I was funny. Like I was like, always kind of the funny kid at school. Um, but then when I got to 18, I was like, I saw stand-up and I was like, man, that looks terrifying. Yep. So I was like, fuck, I feel like I need to do it. I don't know. It was like one of those, like I've got a, like a, like a bucket list kind of thing. I got to jump in the cold water and give it a shot. I did it. It was the like scariest thing I've ever done. I don't, have you ever tried doing like just stand up? Uh, I've done public speaking, but yeah. not not try to specifically be funny. It's, it's yeah, well, yeah. Well, the thing is, like, when you public speak, when you're let's say you're doing acting or you're doing some sort of speech, it's like you know you're you're saying things on stage, but it doesn't really matter because you, you know, if you if you you're just kind of trying to remember, right? If you're saying if you're saying lines from a a, a, a play or something, um, it doesn't matter what you're really saying as long as you remember your lines. Here. If you screw up, you can screw up by forgetting your lines, forgetting what you're going to say. But you're also then trying to be funny. Like you're also trying to convince these people to laugh at you and you're on the line because you're trying to be as funny as you can possibly be in five minutes. You're putting yourself all out on the line. So it's like, it was scary. It was super scary, but I loved it. Um, didn't do a whole lot of stand-up for a little while after and then got back into it. Somewhere in there decided, look, I, I kind of prefer making video content. I wanted to give that a go. I'd done that when I was a kid on my, the old like, Remember like 90s VHS cameras? I used to like make videos on, on that when I was a kid. So I started making YouTube videos, uh, made these like long form kind of uh, review videos. 
Um, and then one day I chased my cat around with a microphone, right? I was trying to be like an ACA reporter, like interviewing my cat. Um, and that video got like 60,000 views. And I was like, damn, here I am putting like two weeks of work into an eight minute video that no one fucking watches. And then I chased my cat around for 16 seconds and you get like 60,000 views. To me, that was huge. So I was like, I should probably do that first. Um, and then I just, that was it. I just kept making short videos. Um, did that on YouTube and, and Instagram and built a bit of an audience. Um, and then in 2017 or something, a friend of mine in the comedy scene got in touch and they're like, you know, uh, Channel 9 always looking for sort of, you know, talent. So I started doing a little news talk segment on the Pulse of Perth. Um, that was every week. And then after that, got a full-time job at Channel 9. So I was like the weatherman and roaming reporter here in Perth. Every morning I was always like at like a new location doing all kinds of fun stuff. So, you know, the guys that they send at like, yeah, we're here at this puppy adoption day or we're here ice skating <laughs> or we're here doing this and that. So that was me for like all of 2019. Um, did that on the national show over Christmas in 2020. And then, yeah, and then since then, just social media, just TikTok. Like my format has been short videos and then TikTok came up and short videos became the thing. How did, so, how did somewhere in there you became a teacher? Well, that's, yeah, so that was my fallback. So I, I was studying uh, in the, like, between 19 to like 22, I was studying. And I did psychology and English because I, I enjoyed those things. But then I was like, somewhere in there is when I got back into stand-up and I was like, cool, I want to pursue this. I feel like I'm good at it, but I need a safety. I need a backup. Um, and I don't know, that's kind of like, you hear that advice where it's like, oh, you got to go 100% into a man. You can't be half pregnant. You've got to be totally committed. I kind of disagree. I think you need a safety backup. Otherwise, you put an insane amount of pressure on yourself. Um, and often, like, what you enjoy becomes work. So, yeah, anyway, so I studied that to be a teacher as backup. And then I did about six months between teaching and getting my job where it was like, if I commit to teaching now, I'm probably just going to really enjoy it, you know, enjoy having the money, get a mortgage and, and go down that path and fair enough. Um, so I gave it six months where I didn't work. And in that six months, I ended up getting the gig on nine. So I was like, cool, this is meant to be, pursue that. Nice. That's my story. I'm very sweaty, by the so way. So what did you? What did you? Uh, why did you start becoming a teacher, though? In the in the initial stages, like, did you did you have that uh, end point where you were like, "Yep, as soon as I get a job, I'm going to become a te pe teacher forever"? Did you have that? I'll get this for the safety net. Did you Did you have a strategy there? It was like, it was yes, it was kind of safety net, but I knew it was a safety net I would enjoy. You know, it's not like, oh, I'll just be a teacher. So it's you like, knew it was going to be a safety net from the beginning before you started studying? No, no, no. So I, w when you study, there's certain degrees like English and like philosophy where all you can do is teach English and philosophy. You know what I mean? Like it's like one of those jobs that you can't really do anything else in. So I had started English and psychology. I was kind of lost. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew I enjoyed studying those things. Um, and then my wife actually started studying teaching and I kind of just picked it up from that. I was like, that's actually not a bad idea. I'd, I'd probably enjoy that. I'd probably enjoy doing that. Um, and so I was like, cool, let me just have that on the side. Let me, let me, focus, let me have that as the eventual degree. Um, UWA, that was like the last year they were offering a one-year degree versus two years. So I was like, yeah, let me do that. And so, yeah, it was like, it was a backup, but it's like, I enjoy it. Like I've done it and I, I really do like it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as you know, you've got to pursue what you are. You That's live it. once, man. You got to pursue what you're absolutely passionate on. That's it. So yeah. you got your, you got your job. Are you still there? No. So um, I did relief. I realized that if I do full time, um, I'm not going to give it the time like comedy, the time it needs. Because you know, when yeah. you're full time teacher, man, you've got homework, you've got like, yeah, you've got all your assignments, your marking, all that kind of stuff, exams. Um, so I did relief for a while, and just recently. Uh, I'm working with my brother who works in kind of like with kids in a similar sort of way, but kind of like disabled kids. And so I'm working with them. That gives me like four days a week. So I'm kind of a bit more flexible. gives me time to make content. So. Yeah. So you're doing like yeah. a carer's role. Pretty much. Yeah. Cool. I've, I've, I do a lot of things. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Very busy, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You're, how old are you for the audience? I am 29. 29 yeah, and you've changed your careers a few times. Right about, I've changed my careers about 29,000 times. Yeah, yeah I can relate. <laughs> And uh, you're no longer kind of working with Channel 9 at all? or No. So what happened was um, <clears throat> pretty much COVID. Like it was a yeah. case of just their, their uh, resources get kind of swallowed up by Sydney because they're the, big, they're the big network. They have it all. Perth is like a small market. So that they can outsource things uh, 
not outsource, but they can create like Perth looking weather from Sydney. So they can just pay their guy who's already doing it to be like, hey, by the way, Perth, uh, 29 here in Armadale, you know, and then and he can just do that and they don't need to pay a whole production team here in Perth. So it's, it was a financial kind of thing. Fair um, enough. And yeah, that's you know, kind of the way the industry goes, unfortunately, but it was a sick job. Absolutely loved it. Um, and yeah, so I'm kind of uh, going at it on my own now. It's like being pushed into like build your own thing now. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing. I think in this day and age, like you need to kind of have your own audience. As you know, like it's yeah. that kind of that gives you, uh, I don't know, gives you more uh, control. You know, when you're working in traditional media, it's great, it's awesome, um, but you're still an employee, and it's like you're gonna at any point they just be like, "Sorry, catch you later." And you felt that, so absolutely, yeah, yeah. totally. It's quite a quite a shock, I must say. <laughs> but hey, here we are. So you you uh, when did you get married? How long ago? Uh, I got married a year and a half ago, hey. March, March last year. Yeah, there we go. Cause the, she liked it and she put a ring on it. So there you go. She proposed to you. No, I proposed. To you. <laughs> just, just going with the Beyonce, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When did you get married? I got married two years ago yesterday. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That's a big, thick wedding band right there. Look at that. Yeah, it's all about the Russian thickness. <laughs> it's the jab, you know. You can just protect if anyone comes to steal it. That's it. Yeah. I, I've actually um, some some of my fellow Eastern European. Russian comrades uh, recognize that so they're like, you're Russian, aren't you? I'm like, how do you know? They're like, that's a Russian sort of. So is that a thing in Russia? They have thicker. They have thick fucking brass. Really? Style. It's brass? Yeah. You got a brass ring. Yeah. Nice. It's nice to meet a man who has a similar amount of knuckle hair to me. So there we go. Yes. We have that in common. Yeah, actually. Just a, like a Yeti, man. Yeah, yes. people, yeah. people who are, because I get all the way to the end there. There's just and the camera there. <laughs> that's yeah people get weirded out by it i'm like yeah and then all around and there's just like a line bro bro's got fingernail hair uh dude I, it goes all out <laughs> i had to trim my arm hair yesterday look at this yeah oh, yeah bush, trim it. you see what? my dad like, why like, did you have to trim it <laughs> it's just too much i don't know i just don't need that much arm hair welcome to the sevo show where you get to listen to two white dudes talk about their hair on their arms yeah, mate, what a it. time to be alive i hope you enjoy the value <laughs> in today's episode so you discovered TikTok. Where, when did yes. you discover that? Was that where you had that cat viral video or was that YouTube? No, that was YouTube. That was YouTube. Was that before shorts as well? Oh, yeah. That was like five, a, five had, years ago. You had a 16-second video go viral on YouTube. Well, it depends. Uh, I don't know. At the time, it was like 60,000 views. It's up to a, like around a million now. Oh, like wow. It's time. Yeah. Um, because Is that back then. monetized you? Is that count as a monetized video? Or? I don't. I should probably check. <laughs> I know, like, I check my YouTube revenue account, and after like like five years, it's like you've made forty nine dollars. So it's like you know, it's like negligible money. Yeah. Um, but maybe, maybe I could check it now. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, viral. It was it was kind of viral. I don't know what what's your like. What do you consider viral? Like what number? Depends on the platform. Mm. I mean, depending on who you are as well. Like, if you have over three hundred people commenting, mm. that I would consider that pretty viral. Because like, imagine a room full of people talking about you and what you just made mm. and there's 300 of them that's pretty viral that's viral yeah okay. but uh again it's subjective to the platform and where you're at so if you've just started an account and you get a hundred thousand views on tiktok i reckon that's pretty good that is good yeah um but i think in now in, in tiktok nowadays anything over a million views is pretty hard to do and i would yeah. say in the scheme of things that's a viral piece of content mm. This video, I think, got on um, – because back then it was like playlist. Yeah. Like there'd be a, like a oh, big yeah. playlist. Uh, Instant Regret, I think that was the name of the playlist. Oh, yeah. Something like, yeah, that. I think he put it on there and then that's kind of where it, where it blew up. Um, but, yeah, I had one video go proper viral. Uh, it was me uh, pretending to be a Vice journalist. And the video was how Vice writes an article. And um, <laughs> it was uh, – I, I, I'll, I'll describe vaguely the video, but he's sitting there thinking of idea, can't think of anything, and he, he pulls a dildo out of a box and he throws it at a, at a whiteboard and then it's got, like, minority, uh, poor country and drug and it lands on, like, um, transgender uh, Colombian ketamine dealer. And then the Vice article comes up, check out these transgender ketamine drug dealers from Colombia, whatever. <laughs> but um, that went fully viral, man. That got retweeted by Joe Rogan. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. Cool. Someone sent me that ages ago. 
Um, but yeah, so so I think that was the one that I, I consider like properly viral, where it went like different countries and stuff. Yeah, um, I agree. But yeah, you know, how it is with TikTok. You know, now and then you'll get you know the odd million, two million views. Yeah. Um, but it's it's always fun. It's always exciting. Yeah, if it's a niche that I'm interested in pushing out and it goes viral, that's for the best feeling. Because mm. like any time of my interview ones come out, like there's a one that I put out last week about these Kiwi kids. That's like that's just hit a million the other day. Nice. On Instagram, no, on TikTok. On Instagram, it's not like it's not as performing that well, but it's still up there. But um, that's always the best feeling, and I feel like I've kind of uh, not been sucked into a, a specific niche myself. Mm. The niche is me. That is great. Like that's what I want to do. Mm. Like because you find a lot of creators uh, do a bunch of shit. One thing works. And then they just do that. Yeah. And they just do it over and over and over yeah. and over. And it's like that will get like meteoric rise. And then it's this sad drop that they never quite recover from. And they don't know how to pivot. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And then you see them like, you know, like two years later making the exact same formula over and over. And they hate themselves. Yeah. Or, and this is something that, you know, some people I've have I've seen, they become successful and it still keeps working for them. Mm. But I know deep inside they have died. Yeah. And that is I don't know if that's worse. It it it's worse in a different way. You're still getting the result. You're just not feeling it. No. And it's like, well, what's the point of the result? The purpose of trying to get results is that you feel yeah. good, right? That's what we're all chasing. And you, all of a sudden, you become an employee of your own brand. Yes. Which is like a nightmare. That is a good point. I've never thought of it like that. Yeah, I you see are. it all the time. Mm. And over the last three years, I've seen people that just oh they. They even come to me. They're like, Sev, what do I do? I'm like, do something different. Yeah. What do you What do you want to do? Like, what is your thing that you love doing? And they they start doing it, but it doesn't work for them. Mm -hmm. No views. Not and then they revert. And I'm like, yeah. You've been sucked in. They They would immediately try it, I reckon, and then it would be like, oh, it's not working. Let me just go back to the old favorite because it's like a, it's like a drug, man. You get yeah. all those views, and mm. man, that red bubble pops up, and people are just like, oh, give me more, you know. Dopamine hit. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a dopamine hit, and so they're gonna try something new. It's not gonna work, and they're gonna just go back to the old yeah. favorite, the old, you know. Yeah. So the way that I've combated it, anyone listening and actually wants to know the answer, is you have to have an eighty twenty rule. Eighty percent what works, twenty percent experimental. Just keep mm. doing that. And your 80%, stuff comes out of that. St stuff gets retired. It becomes vaulted, right? Mm -hmm. You are your own TV channel slash TV station. Each channel has what? TV shows. Each of your TV shows in your TV channel are content pillars. Mm -hmm. And within those content pillars or TV shows are the series. Season one of this show about Adrian, you know, talking about transgender people from... So that's, that's all my shows. <laughs> With dildos and shit, <laughs> right? And then eventually people will get over that series just like in real life TV shows or fake life TV shows. Um, you know how like you, you got your TV show that just drags on for like 12 seasons? Like The Walking Dead just finished up recently mm. after 12 seasons. I, I stopped watching it after fucking two seasons. I was like, this is too predictable. Yeah. Go straight to the comments because that's what I do. And it's everyone's like, that shit should have ended years ago really nah my wife just watched that last episode yeah yeah and you know same with game of thrones but again this is all subjective yeah that, all i mean subjective. they they really screwed up those last two seasons exactly. simpsons would be the best example of that as well yeah Great exactly first 10 seasons yeah the next 700 seasons just fucking rubbish yeah man. but can you think of someone that's done it all time correctly consistently yep uh and breaking bad yeah. all their seasons were good but yeah. that was only five seasons Five seasons. But they Someone killed. that's still around that's been doing it for longer than, let's say, 20 years. Do you mean a show? Yeah. Ooh. I can think of two. What do you got? That I personally like. One is South Park. Yes, yes. Yeah, All Park's time. Good. Yeah, All yeah, yeah. time. They've never, never had a bad... <laughs> They Maybe a missed. couple of episodes where they went back to like the the, the medieval times and they did some weird fucking spin-off mm. that I kind of didn't vibe, but yep. they always came back and nailed it. Mm. And the reason was they kept relevant, they kept mm. with the times, and they had a formula that works, but because there's more than one of those characters, this is why they've never been cancelled, by the way, mm. because no matter which one, it's always Cartman that's always saying some fucked yeah, up shit. Works. There's always an opposing view. 
from one of the other boys. Probably like Stan, who's more yeah. level-headed kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, there's always an opposed view, so so that the crowd that's watching the TV show can never cancel them. Yeah, right. That's that's the so secret. you can almost say anything you want as long as Stan is there to be like, hey, you know, hey, yeah. badass, what do you, what do you, yeah, know? Yeah. What, I disagree. This yeah, is, that's wrong. That's like wrong. calling people, you know, the the Kyle keep calling him a Jew, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and Kyle keep calling him a fat ass, and mm. then they've got all these little things. They, ha- it's amazing they haven't been cancelled. Yeah, it's it's, but it's a whole infrastructure they've created that's smart. just, it's it's very smart, mm. and they <laughs> they even try to. Get cancelled all the it's time. It's not going to happen. If it hasn't happened yet, I just yeah. I think they're beyond it. At this point. But they, they they have a current season. I think it's season twenty five, maybe. Yeah, twenty fifth season, and they they had a St. Patrick's episode. That I haven't looked it up recently. I don't know if there's any more episodes, but um, it was brilliant, mm. absolutely brilliant. And then I looked at one of their most offensive episodes where they had the Virgin Mary statue and it was bleeding out of its ass. <laughs> oh my god. There was and the, everyone, the Muhammad episode as well, oh which I imagine God, was pretty yeah. controversial. But like the the going back to the point where whatever your TV personal TV station is, mm. if you have different TV shows in that, and each of those TV shows have different seasons that cater to the audience, mm. as long as you have multiple streams, you it's like revenue streams, like mm-hmm. income streams. One eventually may turn off. And this is why millionaires and entrepreneurs, like the, the successful ones, they have multiple streams of revenue. If one decides to die, you've got others that mm-hmm. are still kind of like go- going well for you. Whereas the majority of the population, they have one revenue stream and that's their job they have. Mm-hmm. They can get fired from it because of a pandemic or their job, they become redundant. And then they start complaining, going, asking the government for handouts. Meanwhile, the... The more clever people, the entrepreneurs, they go, oh, fuck, I've got passive income from here. Mm. I've got a shares portfolio here. I've got a, a rental property here. And fuck, if I, if I lose my job. It, Smart. I'm, it's diversifying. Diversifying. You're diversifying in every way you can. You're with your income, yeah. Um, with your yeah, with your content, like you yeah. said. It's just in, yeah, never have all your eggs in one basket. Mm. Totally agree. And that's what creators and influencers are doing wrong. Mm. They're, they're doing that. And it's like I have another theory. Um, sort of kind of analogy you have creators who are like they get drafted they get a couple of videos they go viral and they get drafted to a specific platform right drafted as in the platform they they become they become a like a player in the Mm, game okay and they're a rookie they're doing well they get better they get more views they get more viral they get more followers whatever they're in their limelight they give their shelf life about two to five years maximum yeah Closer to two than five because that's what I'm seeing. Same with like NFL players. Mm. Their shelf life is two to three years, majority of them. Really? Right? Yeah. Because the only because you know they're not all Tom Brady's. They're no. not going to be playing in no, their forties, are they? But everybody tries to be like Tom Brady, mm. right? But in the in that during that small period of time, you need to obviously you know enjoy it, milk it, but know that there's a means to an end, and you have to think laterally and then outside the box and post that career. Mm-hmm. To survive. Yep. So creators and influencers, what they need to do is they need to get good with business. They don't. They just think it will come to them. They're enjoying their fruits of their labor and they're thinking, oh, I built my account up and all this shit. And then they start complaining going, where are my views? This is my livelihood. Mm. It's like the girls on OnlyFans. They're like, oh, my God, I got banned off TikTok. It's my only revenue. It was my main lead generator. I'm mm. like, well, that's your problem. Mm-hmm. You didn't go to other... Like multiple different sources. Multiple different sources. You yeah. didn't hustle it enough. You mm. know, you thought it came easy for you. So, and it's and that's the that's what I realize now. And I can help these people. Mm. Whether you're in fucking OnlyFans, the biggest mistake OnlyFans people make, and I'm not just saying girls, but others, is they don't put their money and pay them se- their future selves first, because their shelf life is short as well. Of course, yeah. Right now we're in the peak, right? That Anna Paul girl and all these other girls, they're all doing amazing shit. Well, it's also by your age as well. I mean, yeah. you've got, if you're in that industry, you've got what, like 10 years maybe? Depends. Less even? Depends on where you put the money, I guess. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing the cracks start to, you know, mm. appear. And I, and I see these girls, they get stressed, they get anxiety. And I'm like, why don't you put the money into a shares portfolio? Mm. They don't know how to do it. That's that's the advice I try and give people all the time. Like I uh, can't remember what book I read this in, but it was like 
when your paycheck comes in, the first thing you should do is take a segment of it into long-term investment. Barefoot investor? Maybe. Yeah. Or it was uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yeah. Or a Tony Robbins book, one of them. Yeah. I'm not sure which. Anyway, it was like, take that first segment, invest it, live off the rest. Yeah. So good. Because like everyone's like, oh, yeah, nah, I'll just buy what I need. I'll buy this or that. And or then save left. it. Or save it. Or save it, yeah. So just leave it there and just watch inflation take it all away, you know? Um, but no, so you invest that. And so for me, for the last two years, uh, I read that in a book straight away. I like got like an automatic, I got the account, the ComSec account, automatically transfers however much every single week. And I'll be doing that for two straight years. And now I have all this money that I just didn't work for. It's just there now, you know? And it's like, if you just keep doing that, it, it doesn't matter. You don't need to know shares. Like no. It's like, just pick a few index funds, whatever. Index funds, key word. Seriously, yeah. I can't stress this enough. Just start. And most people won't, but just start. And then you've just got money that you, you know, times will go like this. You just don't look at it and you leave it for 20 years. And you'll just have all this money that you don't, you know. It's yeah. always a risk, obviously. But over a 20-year period, that's going to be up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, you, you forget about it. You don't look at it. You can live without 100 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is a week, invest it. Yeah, your future yeah. self will thank you mm -hmm. and you'll get to a point where your dividends actually cover your life uh, expenses. That's the goal. And you're free. Yep. Yeah, that's financial freedom. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's it. But here's what I'm, I'm hoping. Here we go. <laughs> so how do we relate that back to influencers and creators? I say to them, you can't have financial freedom on social media because you're always trying to chase the bag. Mm. You're either securing your next brand deal or your, your next collaboration and stuff like that. That money's going to come in and you're also stressing about the vanity metrics of the results of your views and your mm. comments and your fucking shares and all that shit. Vanity metrics, that's a good term. No good. That's all they are. No good. Mm. No good because there's a means to an end with that. Like last year I was quoting and I was getting over $5,000 per post. Damn. And, it, and I was like, holy shit, that's mm. cool. But then I was like, do they get the value from this or am I just good at hustling? Yeah. You know, I, and I want both. You know, mm. it's, good, it's good to be good at hustling. But at the same time, I want that. If they come back to me again, yeah, I've yeah. done a good job. But I'm only getting one-offs. And that doesn't sit well with me because mm -hmm. I didn't provide enough value for them to, to come back. Yep. I have a couple of people have come back since then, which is great. But uh, that's where I, you know, draw the line. I'm not, I'm not money driven. I'm results driven, and results driven actually gets you more money in the long term. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, I say to influencers and creators, whoever you're collaborating with, you need to be fully invested with that brand, c company, or business that has appointed you. And uh, another pro tip: try to deal directly with the brand. Rather than like a marketing agency or someone in between? Yeah. Right. Why is yeah. that? I've just had a better time doing that. Yeah. Okay. It's straight to the point. They give you a little bit more creative reign. Mm. There's no middleman that's yeah. trying to take your money as mm -hmm. well. Because agencies, they're the middleman. Yeah. Right? And yeah, I'm making an agency, but I'm for, I don't like the word agency. I want it to be more of a collaborative. Mm -hmm. It's like, how much do you want for this? How much would you like to get for this collaboration deal? Okay, cool. And then I'll put a little bit on top of that. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, I need to get paid. But what I see a lot of these uh, agencies do is they approach, they have a budget, they approach influencers and creators and go, hey, we'd like, we love your work, blah, blah, blah. Found you on Instagram, all this shit. You can see it's all templated yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. They just put your fucking name on the top. I get that, yeah, quite and often. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then they go, um, we're, 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 We'll give you this in exchange for a video, like mm. Contra. It's like, no, this is how much money that – these are my rates. Yeah. And then they go, oh, they're like, oh, it's not within the budget. It's like, no, it is It, it is within the budget. You've come to us first, the better creators, but now the quality of the creators are going to go down based off of what your profit margin wants to be. Mm. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. And that's bullshit because then who gets um, the shit result? The client. So that's why I suggest to people, see if you can deal with directly with the brand mm. because then they understand the value. Otherwise, the, the value is diluted. Even sometimes like agencies, they're like, what's your idea? I'm like this. And they're like, okay, cool. Uh, I don't know. Or they'll tell the client the idea and their, the message will be kind of diluted. Mm. So that's why I always try to get in front of decision makers. That, that's a really good idea. 
Because then, and there's just less uh, opinions in there as well. Yeah. Because yeah, like as like as a comedian, you 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 want creative freedom. You want to be like I. I've spent my life trying to figure out what's funny. I know this is going to be good. This, uh, uh, this will work. But then you've just got like 50 different corporate people being like, oh, maybe don't do that. Or maybe you could offend people if you say that. And it's like, it just waters it down to the point yeah. that it's just not funny. It's not no. even interesting anymore. And, and you're like, just, well, they're uh, not going to get the same results, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. you're just an employee again, being a body. Yeah. Like, and you could still do that. Like I approach creators all the time saying, hey, would you like X amount per hour to come and be just an actor? Mm. You don't have to post anything on your channel or anything. You just come in. This is the product we're doing. This is kind of the vibe that I'm feeling. Are you able to come in and I'll be the creative director? And they're like, yeah, sick. Mm. And the content did really well. Nice. And even I've got one specific person, when I got her to be involved, she put her, She actually ended up putting it on her channel. Just like just good content. Yeah. yeah. And, and she, most views on the channel she's had in a long time. Oh, really? And that's was, what you want. You want like a like something sponsored to go viral because that li- yeah, like you said, it feels nice to give them results. Like I've had, um, yeah, like I've, and everyone kind of charges differently or, or you know gives differently. Um, I've had companies who who gave real generously. I got really self conscious. I'm like shit, man. Like I once I make this video, I'm not in control of how many views this gets. Yeah, I'm sitting there like more anxious about that than I am about my own videos. I'm like whatever. I just I want this to go That's well because I want them either. to get good. Yeah. And I feel guilty because I'm yeah. like, shit, man. Like they've just, you know, paid me however much and I've just got like 600 views. Here you go. And I just feel bad. I'm just like, man. Mm. And so then, you know they're not going to come back. So it's, yeah, it's it's stressful. It is. You don't, and, you don't really like it. And they've also signed off on the fact that they like the content. Yeah. So it is, obviously it's, it's you know, they've taken the risk. Mm. Um, but you, you can't help but feel bad. You know? No, this you can't. This is my work. I want it to so, help you guys as well. But but then you're a slave to the algorithm. Well, yeah. On on TikTok, you're just unfortunately always a slave to the algorithm. So how how to combat that is you pitch it as you're creating content for them, mm. as the brand ambassador for that campaign or whatever. You posting it on your TikTok is a bonus. Mm. It's it's yeah, like right. a it's like an add on that's free. Yeah. Right. But you're you're explaining that what they're paying for is your time to produce the content. From their angle, they're paying for I I think they're thinking that they're paying for the audience. Yeah. Like they want your reach. Yeah. 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 But it's not guaranteed because no. the algorithm's fucked. And the engagement just gets less and less yeah. as well. But then then what I do is I also offer them um free kind of boosting. They want to boost it on my end. That's fine. Easy. Great. Also, they pay for boosting on your yeah spark oh, ads. Okay. That's what spark ads are. Right. Um, but I'm I had one so much here. This is yeah. great. Yeah. But I had one recently. <laughs> Take notes. I had one recently where um, the the agency that mm. I dealt with they boosted a video, and it had like 400,000 views. Right. And that looks impressive as a vanity metric for the client. Yeah. And I'm hope as hell hope that they don't report that to their client and go. Oh look, we've got you four hundred thousand views, because that's bullshit. How many sales did they get? Did it convert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I. That's what I want to know as well. Mm. Um, but I look at the um, the metrics, like the, the the retention rate. When I first initially posted it without boosting, it was at about thirty forty thousand views, mm-hmm. and the retention you want is at least half of those that audience to watch half of that video. Right. Um, sorry. Sorry, total amount of people, um, the average watch time is above 50%. So of the total audience that's watched the video, at least half of the videos watched on average. That seems like an ambitious goal. But that's, that's, a, that's I've noticed that that is part one of what you need to hit to, for, the, for the content to be pushed out further. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a tipping oh. point. And then the second one is of that entire audience that watches all your content a quarter of them so 25 percent have to watch it the whole way through right so there's two metrics so these are, these are like you know yeah. the algorithm that's what metrics I, that's yeah that you figured out yeah because everyone wants to know this is this is the question that everyone wants to know is that how do you you know what what is the algorithm looking for it's I've retention. Had videos that have done retention. so well yeah. and then they've just nothing so retention so retention. retention and it's retention for a certain amount of time like my Biggest video this year was the hook was me sitting in this very chair and mm. I said total time clapping. Yeah, I saw that one. So that hook 
That's a strong hook. Was relatable and going, total time clapping cheeks. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I want to listen. Oh, i got to see this. And then I said something that bridged that uh, hook where I said, okay, this is something that can be quite – I said prude. I meant crude. So that was one oh, thing. Yeah, well, it proves the opposite. Yeah, yeah, it proves the opposite. But um, I, I, I built, a, built up a climax, like mm. uh, built to a climax. No pun intended. Right. Yeah. And, and then when I gave him the, the, the golden nugget, which is what I told him that the watch did. Um, Great idea, by the people, way. Yeah, people, yeah. Every were, dude wrote that down, I reckon. <laughs> but, but like in the comments, it was just girls tagging each other. Oh, really? Yeah. Girls tagging each yeah, other. Yeah. I thought you'd be tagging the boys, like, oh, boys, yeah. come on, let's oh, give this a go. This is sick. That as well. But I also accidentally timed it uh, perfectly with Apple's release, Apple's new uh, Apple Watch release. Oh, really? So, yeah, my um, the Apple Watch hashtag was trending right. at the time, and my video was, like, number one on the of TikTok. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's huge. So How many views did that get? Uh, like over 6 million on both. Wow. So TikTok, 6 million, Instagram, 6 million. Yeah, that's massive. Yeah. That's viral. That's viral. That is truly viral. And that was, yeah. But I think that the elements that I take away from that are the hook needs to be strong. Yeah. Right? And there's a dead giveaway where people are saying the first three seconds are everything. The algorithm or the, the app actually reads what you say or listens to what you say in the videos. Yeah. Hence why there's captions automated. Mm -hmm. But specifically in the first three seconds. Right. So you need to pretty much search engine, engine optimize SEO exactly what's happening in the video in the first three seconds with really? clear wording. Yeah. How does it, how does the algorithm know that what you're saying there pertains to the whole video though? It doesn't necessarily, but if you keep peppering that word and reimbur uh, and, and helping it out within the caption, yeah, that will potentially work as well. Yeah. Right. But then that comes to retention, mm. right? So if you say, here's a way that you can get rich quick, right? Mm. And then you talk about some dumb pyramid scheme, the audience is going to click away as soon as they figure that out. Yeah. Hence the retention strategy. Right. So retention strategy, at least half the video is watched by, on average, by all of everybody. Yeah. That means it's a good video. And then, yeah, the quarter of that audience watches the entire video. So half of the, of the half. Um, and that signals that the, the that is helped by the initial hook of the first three seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I feel like the algorithm just knows, just knows. It's fascinating. Yeah, they have developed some crazy technology yeah. here. But because of the attention span of people, you need to have the first three seconds absolutely without doubt told, yeah. spoken to the audience. This is what's happening. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you were use the words your or you as well. That is something that I've noticed that people just really. Love. And if there's a way to incentivize people to engage earlier, mm -hmm. not at the end, but earlier, if you can get them into the comments within the first five seconds, that video is playing in the background over and over and over. Yeah, right. There's, there's what all. Would, what would uh, inspire someone to do that early versus later? Um, at the end, fair enough. Hey, leave a comment if you this, this, this. At the start, though, who's going to pause the video? Yeah. Like, for what reason would you pause uh, the video? Opposed opinion. Oh, really? Opposed opinion. So you're just getting, like, hate comments. Just people be like, nah, fuck this, man. I totally disagree. Kind of. <laughs> Which is still good because well, they, they just want emotion, right? That's the easiest way to do it. The hardest way is doing it without trying to do it with shock value. Mm. So comedians have it easy because yep. they can just say, you know, palma instead of palmy and then away they go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, um, but yeah, it's it, there's a whole art to it, and but like Mr. Beast does it well, mm -hmm. and and it's just you just tell the audience what's about to happen, and if you do it quick enough and fun enough and engaging enough and and instill a bent sense of FOMO that makes mm -hmm. it look like it's in the moment, mm -hmm. that's where the audience will stick around. Yeah. And Anna Paul does it; she her, all her content. Um, Looks like it's in the moment then and there. Phone? Some girl that got popular on TikTok. Right. In, in, uh, she lives over east and she's got OnlyFans and she's a real girl and all this shit. Right, right. Um, no hate to her, mm. but, you know, there's categories that I put put influencers in and there's two. Yeah. Do they give me long-term value or do they entertain me? Mm -hmm. Right? So there's a quote that I love. The, the quote is... Um, Fuck, i got to make sure I nail this. <laughs> no, that was the quote. There yeah. it was. <laughs> Fuck, I, gotta, I better make sure I nail that's this. That's the one. 
Because um, Einstein said that. That's right. That's right. So it's um, victors love education. Victims enjoy entertainment. Mm. Do you want to be a victor or a victim? That's good. Right? Yeah. Victors love education because education is what propels them to become better people. Yeah. No matter what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Victims just watch entertainment. Mm. And that entertainment is most of the time quick dopamine hit rubbish. It's a distraction. It's like it's my distraction. life sucks. I'm unhappy. I'm lazy. Whatever. I worked my day. I just want to switch off, man. I don't want to, you know. And that's fine. And, and that's improve. fine. Yeah. And that's fine. But it's like there's You're no. You're not going to grow. No, they're not going to grow. And that, that, that content is fuel to the fire. Mm. And that's my next like major pivot in my content. I want to do these podcasts to talk about this shit, mm. clip this specific part and pull it out. Even though it's not going to do well compared to my eating chicken wings and all that shit. Of course, yeah, yeah. I'm still going to put that in there. Mm. But there's – and with kids being an educator, you know this. Kids have – uh, opportunity, open window opportunities where they're willing to learn something. Yeah. And sometimes it comes randomly, but sometimes you can nurture it to, to open up depending on how good you are. Yeah. But if they're in a mood to learn something and your video comes up and they go, oh, Seb's normally funny, but this is different. This is not a style. What's he talking about here? Oh, no shit. Mm. That's something that I needed to learn today. But see, you got them with the chicken wing videos, right? So it's yeah. like you you open the door with that. They they like you and they yeah. recognize you and you're a trusted figure. Yeah. And then you kind of sneak in some education. Yeah. And then that gives them the long-term value. Yeah. So it's like I appreciate the fact of doing both where mm. it's like entertain and then slip in some education. And yeah. now obviously you want to do more of that education, but that's great. But you've got a like a big audience now and, and you are able to do that. Yeah. It's awesome. Edutainment. Edutainment. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So okay. if you're able to do both at the same time, put logic with humor, mm. add in an opposed opinion, you've got three elements. Um, it's uh, it's called the um, there's like a there's like a name for it. I keep forgetting it. Yeah. Um, there's three elements there. There's also a fourth element, which is imagination. So making it different than other people's, like the right. creative side. This is in terms of the algorithm. No, saying, yeah, this is in terms yeah. of like creating the best piece of content that you right. can possibly do. And then you have, um, yeah, something that's engaging and, yeah, the opposed opinion. And there's, mm -hmm. a, few, there's a few others there. Um, proce uh, process communication model, I think it's called. Yeah. And, but if you can bring in my two favorite are logic and humor and then opposed opinion. Because right. people debate about it. Mm -hmm. you, know, they make, you make them think about it. And if they think about it, you've got them. Yeah. Right. So, and that's where I come in and go, well, look at these. Can you know that article? Did you see the article in the Sunday Times on, on Sunday, um, with me in it? <laughs> no. See? no. So no. I got. That's how I read the paper. I don't. I don't either. I just got fucking tagged to smithereens from it. What are they? What are they right? So there's an influencer, and I don't even know her name. Um, she lives in Perth. Yeah. And her husband got arrested for killing his mum. My cousin Apparently. went to school with that dude. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> Perth Now and the Sunday Times and whoever fucking, you know more than me, mm. which media company owns that shit? Uh, Sunday, uh, Seven West. Yeah, yeah, right. So I don't even know who the writer was. You know, thank you for the shout out, I guess. But they thought Any it was... publicity is good publicity. <laughs> but this is what I don't get. They thought it was a good idea... To take a, a tragedy and put me in the fucking limelight. I don't even call it limelight. And go, okay, so we've got an influencer's husband who killed his mum. Oh, by the way, here are the other influencers out there that are considered A-list in so Perth. You're like the representative of, of influencers. I called my mum up straight away. And I was like, mum, you're good. I'm not going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I had to tell my mum that as well, by the way. <laughs> yeah, wow. I was like, what the fuck? And did did like, you comment? Oh, I don't give a shit. Yeah. But, like, I'm reading the comments um, on Facebook and Perth Now website. Mm. And there's one that strikes me, like, in, like very interesting. It was anonymous, by the way. Yep. As they all are. Because people are fucking keyboard warriors. Yeah, yeah. And they literally just roasted everyone cool. in, in the list. All the influencers. Yeah, just yeah, went, right. all right, these two are fucking nobodies pushing out products and <laughs> shit. This guy's um, – this guy's – you know, 
saying that he's connecting other people and stuff. And again, no disrespect to any of them. This is something yeah. someone else said, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not necessarily agreeing with them. Mm. But the way he categorized me was, this guy looks like he should be on the Crime Stoppers watch list. <laughs> well, look, you got off kind of light on that one, I reckon. That's not too bad. <laughs> but it, but it, like, it got to me for a moment because I never wanted to be on the influencer list or anything like that. I didn't give a fuck. I started to do the TikTok stuff because I wanted to relate to the kids at school as a teacher. Yeah. And I successfully did that well and truly beyond my imagination mm. that, that I, you know, there was a year eight girl in class. Um, this was three years ago. Her name's Maddie. I can say her name now because she's graduated. And I think sometimes. Anyway, she she was saying to me, oh, so you're on TikTok. Look at mine. She had 25,000 followers. Um, but all her videos was on private for some reason. I don't know, some self-conscious thing. Mm. And uh, I was like, all right, cool. I've got an aim now. I've got to beat that. It was a competition. Then, uh, yeah, well, yeah. And then... Um, I don't know where then, Maddie is, but you blew her out of the water. Yeah. Right? Tell you. <laughs> where is she now? Yeah. Still yeah. at school. Um, but there was another girl, um, uh, I forget her name, but she had 40,000 followers. And I was like, fuck, that's a big deal. Mm. I wasn't a student. She was like hanging out with the crowd when, when I was doing photography in and around the scene. And I surpassed her as well. Mm. And I was just like, how good's this? Um, but um, I'm really just like... I don't, I don't give a shit. Mm. I've always, like you said, like you with your camcorder when you were younger, that's what I did. I loved just it. loved doing that. Yeah. And now, and back then, living in Kalgoorlie, I made a YouTube video as well and it got over 100,000, 200,000 views. Mm. Um, what was it? Oh, it was actually, I figured out how to rip uh, TV ads from uh, from the TV and put it on YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was, it was a... Was 2006, ad. yeah. Which ad? Do you remember? Um, there was it was a Libra pads ad, and the guy oh, yes, was fucking one. around. Was that was like, classic, hey, yeah, full, yeah. Full, full. yeah, yeah, that one. And I put it up, nice. and, and we went viral. And I didn't know what that meant back then. I was yeah, like, yeah. sick. It was but, hard back then as well. Yeah, like that's that's a lot of views for back. But then. I had a knack. I, I didn't realize it back then, but I realize now I had a knack for it. Mm. I had a knack for finding funny content. Yeah, and I exercised that skill um, on uh, TikTok late 2020, around 2020, yep. um, when I needed, wanted to put something up that day because you needed to put something up. You've, you right? keep the content coming, mate. It. it just never ends. And I'd go on Reddit and I'd go to the news section and I'd be like, what's out there? Mm. I'm like, oh, that's funny, a fucking goat headbutting a cat off a fence. I was like, yeah, that'll do. Put that up viral. Did you like review it or did you just put the video up? Just put it up. Really? Let's put it up. On TikTok? Yeah. Under and when, your name? Yeah, it's one of the most successful videos on my account. Really? Yeah. And well, you could just do that. <laughs> well, I didn't want to become a meme page. Yeah. That's the point. That's the whole point. Sev shit posting is yeah. what you're going to become. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could put it as a green screen video and review it and shit like that. But yeah. now I'm really honing in on that value, like entertainment or education. Yes. Now I'm posting less than I've ever done before because any content that I put out, I'm like, is this giving someone educational purposes? Is there value behind this? Mm. There is there is a lot more uh, like structure behind it. Yeah. Um, SOC acronym: Strategically Organic Content. Can I be devil's ad advocate for a Go second on. here? Would you be doing this if you were still in the chase of growing? So you're you're in a position that's huge, right? You yeah. have like what 1.2 million followers. Yep. If you were still at 200,000 and you're like still trying to game that algorithm, still trying to grow, still trying to hit that mill, yeah. whatever the goal is, would you still be doing this? Or is it now that like you can relax a bit, you're like, cool, I've done it, got to a mill, I'm huge, yeah. now I can kind of do what I really want to do. Yeah, there's, there's, there's theories about that where it aligns with what we talked about earlier with financial freedom, Yeah, right? You, you, you make the money however you want to make it, however mm -hmm. you need to make it, just go hustle, go yeah. hard. And then once you've made it, cool, whatever, I'm going to live in Fremantle and be a barista for the rest of my life because I fucking can. Yeah. Right? So that works in that way. But if I was to start again, I would really just now that I know what my TV shows in my TV, excuse me, on my TV channel yeah. are, I'm just going to go in on them. But I don't know the alternative. Mm. But if I was to, and this is what I do, I consult people. When they start, know who you are, know what your intent is with what you're doing and just go all in on that. But also share your quirks as well. 
And that's what I did. I shared my quirks, my height, made, take, took the piss out of my height, did the chicken wing thing. That was all me anyway. That was all me sharing my life as it was anyway. Yeah. So everything that I share still now is the shit that comes out of my head. Of course. So it's not me going, I need to go viral. Mm. It's just me going, I'm bored. I'm going to put out a video today. This is funny. Yeah. To me, it's funny. For sure. It's not, yeah, yeah. I hope this is funny. I hope it goes viral. Mm. There's no, there's no thing behind it where I'm like, this needs to work. It's, it's never been that. Yeah. And I think for, because of that, that's why I'm a lot more chill and I don't give a fuck about, yeah. you know, views and that. Mm -hmm. When a video bombs, it bombs. Yeah. Next one. Right. I've, yeah. I, I've always thought, uh, cause like I said, when I was first making content, it was super long and just straight up, man, no one wanted to watch it because who the fuck am I? Mm. And I'm, and why would you give me eight minutes of your time? Yeah. So I started making short videos that did well. Mm. And I was like, well, I also enjoy that. Like I enjoy both yeah. except all the time and effort of this is not going to really get me anywhere for a very, very long time. This can grow my audience and then I can do that to an audience who actually want to watch. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now. So I've got a bit of an audience and now I'm making that long form content again, yeah. but people can watch it, which is nice, you know? So for me, it was always like, obviously do what you love, but the thing is I love like a lot of things. It's not yeah. like I love only doing one thing. It's like, I, I love just making people laugh and being clever and being funny and doing these like, you know, making content that's entertaining. Um, but yeah, it's just like there's, Unfortunately, if, if you're not really well known, there's no demand for that massive thing. So right. it's like bring them in with this and then pepper in one or yeah. two of these and then eventually one day be in the position that you can just do that. That's kind of, you know, for me, it's been the trade-off between what I really want to make and what people will actually watch. The giveaway has always been in cinema. Mm -hmm. Trailers before feature films. You go to a movie that you were invest invested to watch in what, what happens at the start of the movie before the movie starts that you get a montage of different trailers of mm -hmm. upcoming films and you look at all of them and they're all 30 to 60 seconds each, short form content, yeah. condensing what's going to happen in a video. It's the original TikTok. Yeah, convincing. It's a reel. Mm. It's a reel. It's a short, you know. Um, and you go, yep, I'm going to watch that. That, that, that I'm going to invest an hour and a half to two hours of my time to watch that entirely because mm. the trailer convinced me. So now we're making trailers of our lives condensed into a, a, a bite-sized piece that people can consume. And then when they go, yes, I want to consume this man more, depending on who it is. Yeah, nothing sus there. <laughs> just, I want to totally <laughs> bit, consume this man. Sus. Yeah. So, and that's when I realized, I, I, knew, I know I knew this before, but when, when people discover you on long form content, they mm. don't know who the fuck you are. They don't give a shit. Yeah. Unless you're able to do it like, someone like David Dobrik or Casey Neistat, Mr. Beast, they're, they've got short form content within the long form content. It's all like chapters mm. within the content. Something else that I learned, they have small bit hook, hook you in, pay off. Small bit hook you in, pay off. Right. It's all just, if you look at it, that's what it is. I've never noticed that. Yeah. 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 If you look at it carefully, yeah. that's exactly what they also do in movies. Yeah, right. Because it's like, it's like a, a, a little video makes up, like many little videos make up yeah. the entire video. Yeah. It just keeps you on that, keeps you hooked, keeps yeah. you going. Do you like Star Wars? Uh, yeah, I've, I've watched them. So I'm not Star a Wars. Star Wars fan, but I enjoyed it. So use Star Wars for an example. How many storylines the, are in one movie? I haven't watched them in a while. So. No, any of them. Yeah. There's right, many. Like a lot, yeah. Yeah, like when old mate Luke crashed into the fucking planet when met with Yoda, mm. was the whole movie entirely in that in that scene, no, they went back and forth with whatever Han and Solo and Chewbacca were doing and old mate Darth fucking Vader mm. and everyone's, you know, there's different plots happening at the same time. Yeah. And same with uh, Modern Family. Modern yeah. Family, you've seen Modern Family? Yeah, I've seen a bit. Yeah, so Modern Family does it. They've got different storylines mm. all in the one episode. And every scene has its own little climax as well. Yeah. Like the whole episode goes, I think the this, this storyline uh, or the structure is like it moves up Climax, and then there's a little end like that. Yeah. But then in that, every scene kind of does that. Yeah. And so that all slowly builds up. To exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what you need to do for long format content. Right. right? Unless it's like a conversation, like on a podcast. Yeah. So to be successful long form, you need like people make vlogs and shit, right? Mm. 
But those vlogs need many moments where you're like, oh, fuck, I want to see what happens here. Mm. Oh, great, that's happened. All right, what's next? What's next? What's yeah, next? yeah, yeah. It's like comedy, right? Yes. As well, what happens? Do you do stand-up that is build up to a big payoff at the end or would you rather quick, quick, bang, 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 bang? It, or something yeah. in between. My um, when I was doing stand up, I like I did it about three and a half years. So I by no means did I like master it, you know. And that's one thing I always want to go back to at some point. Give it a go. Why not? Keep going. Um, but the comedy that I liked, the comedy I like watching, will tell a story. And you're right, actually, it's got punchlines all the way throughout. So that kind of keeps you going because you you know when you try jokes that were a long story for a big payoff. It's just boring, boring, boring kind of funny. Yeah. It's like you need to have ongoing punchlines. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah. So that's why it's harder to make long form content because it's a lot harder to edit that and structure it. Yeah, for sure. Short form is a lot easier mm -hmm. because it's one single payoff. Yeah. It's like telling a knock knock joke, there it is, done. Do the next one. We're mm. away. So if you can do both, you are doing very well for yourself. For sure. And the best way to do it is start off long. And then get those snippets, trailer of the movie to then showcase and pepper out throughout all of social media mm -hmm. to bring them all in to go, where can I watch this as a collection? Oh, yeah. there's a whole fucking movie about it. Yeah. Sick. It's like Jackass. Right? Jackass is skit after skit. They put one skit in the trailer and you're just like, holy fuck. I want to watch this whole thing. I want to watch this whole mm -hmm. thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. I have been doing that with a longer video. So, yeah. Because I've only just started doing this, but it's been like, yeah, make the video and then cut little clips to put on social mm. media, and that's great. Some of them do really well. Yeah. Some not so much, but um, yeah, it's great. It's great. the same thing as we're talking here. Like, um, I've got four different topics I want to talk about, mm -hmm. and in those topics, there's going to be golden nuggets. And what people try to do too much of, especially mainstream media, is they yep. script it. Yes, which I hate. The whole reality TV thing, fucking scripted. The whole talk show ho host thing, it's fucking scripted. Even, yeah, the reading even teleprompters. Spicks and Specs and whatever it's called. No, have you been paying attention? That show. Oh, yeah. It's all fucking pre written. I had no idea. Not I was jokes. like, no way. Yeah, they don't do them off the cusp. Well, they get comedians on there, right? Yeah, like, they do. I don't think I've watched the full, I've watched bits and pieces but of they it. Get, but they get the questions beforehand oh. so they can write jokes about it. Yeah, right. So I've been told. And, well, that probably makes sense. Yeah, I yeah. haven't personally confirmed this, yeah, but yeah. I've been told by people Let's in that industry. Let's start a rumor. Why not? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> make, make some excitement here. But it takes the magic away. It's like it's yeah. like, it's like like finding out something like Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah, yeah. Fuck shit. You don't want to say that too loud. No. <laughs> no. My audience is Got some enough. believers listening. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. Well, but you can always tell like a, like a totally improvised joke. Hmm. And there's a different feeling about it. It's like, like, like when you're watching a stand-up show and, and, and it's obvious that the person has made this up in the spot, the joke itself, if you saw it written down, wouldn't be that funny. It'd no. be like a four out of, out of ten joke. But the fact that you're in the room and you can tell, man, we're human beings, we know, you can tell that person just thought of it then and said it. It becomes like an eight out of ten. It becomes super funny. Yeah. You know that wasn't scripted, wasn't rehearsed, just came out on the spot. Yeah. Um, yeah. TV comedy tends to not be very funny probably for that reason. Yeah. Speaking of scripted, and mm. you, you can veto these lines of questions because you're, sure. you're still part of the uh, TRB. Yes. Um, the education system, to me, Yep. and I'm saying this because I'm, I'm already completely out, deregistered, whatever, shunned and... Shunned and, yep. Stoned to death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, they're, they didn't they're standing there with pitchforks outside the window That's right it. now. Just... That's it. But um, to me, that's... We're in the same kind of debate there where things are too scripted, things are too outdated. You're reading from a textbook, whether mm. it's a textbook physically or a digital textbook now because we've got technology. Very to, updated. Yeah, yeah. You know? 21st and it's, century. <laughs> it's a, lo a lot easier to, to plan it and it's a lot easier to not have to fucking photocopy shit and get books ruined. Mm. But I found that kids – was so much easier to teach when they got the practical stuff first yes and reverse engineered that interest around the topic mm -hmm. um you know practical based learning hands-on experience i just still see not see a, a, a lot of that and the reason why i see is there's not enough time in the day hours in the week or money paid to the teachers to be able to really create solid lessons around that yes they've, they've got stem They've got 
uh, science, technology, English, and maths for everybody. That's science and technology within English and maths. If if people don't know what STEM means, they've got STEM outside of school for people that may want to do it. Yeah. Right. But I feel like, and this is a question I get asked. Oh, Sev, you're always shitting about the shitting on the education system. What would you do differently if it was up to you? For me, it would be like Elon says, because um, he's got his own school. You wouldn't start teaching kids about a screwdriver and everything and how to use it and all that stuff. You'd start with the engine and go, right, this is the screwdriver you need to to open this engine up if you're interested in pulling up a part of the engine. Mm. Oh, you are? Okay, well, this is everything you need to know about the screwdriver because it's a, it's a necessity. Yeah. Right? I didn't really give a shit about like a switchboard, a TV and stuff like this. But now we've got cameras and stuff and we can do these switchings between each camera. I'm like... I want to know what that switchboard does now yeah, yeah. and all the ins and outs about it because that's my interest. I feel like the education system needs to hone in on that super early. Mm. As soon as the kids are starting to show interest in something and going, hey, here's a specialised subject. Not, okay, it's year eight. You've got three specialised subjects to choose from and uh, hopefully you get in first and mm. your name starts with Aaron or some shit. And you Aaron get, Aardvark. Yeah, Aaron he Aardvark. And Bro, I did sewing in year eight. Like, what the fuck did yeah. I? Why did I need to do why? a yeah. semester of sewing? Yeah, I had yeah. kids in my photography class and I was stoked to teach photography. Yeah. But they were like, I don't want to be here. I just didn't mm. get my sports subject, specialized sports subject. They feel They don't want to be there and honestly, you don't want them there. It's no. It's like, give that to kids who actually want to be there. Yeah. That, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, that I I really just kind of want us to hear what you have to say about this this, this whole system still currently being in it and and – where you see it going. So I, I agree. And so like when I studied, there was, there was talk about it. And I feel like everyone says that this needs to happen and then it just doesn't happen. Like I feel like everyone says, yeah, man, we need to do – the whole system needs to be overhauled and, bro, we're still sitting in desks like they did in the 1800s. And like we've heard all these points. And it's like, yeah, nothing's happening. Yeah. So – there is like, there are some like other other countries like Singapore and stuff, they do like problem-based learning, stuff like that, where it's really interesting. Like the whole, every uh, every subject will approach a different angle of the same problem, which is really cool. I don't know exactly how that looks, but they, they will spend like a whole day or two days on one problem, which is really interesting way of doing it. I think the problem seems that, well, you need to learn how to sit your exam and do all this to get into the right uni because the unis are teaching like that. But then the primary schools are like, well, you need to get into high school. So you need to do the same thing. Yeah. You need to sit at desks. You need to write exams to prepare you for high school. So it's like, do you begin at the bottom or do you begin at the top? At what point do you need to change the whole structure? Should the people at university be learning in totally different ways? And will that trickle down as the people beneath try and you know, grow and they, they go their way up? Um, or do you just start teaching like that in primary school? Because you've got like, you've got schools that do different stuff, right? So you've got, um, what are they called? Uh, the Steiner Montessori, the what? Montessori, yeah, Montessori, Montessori, and Steiner schools, right? They, you know, they they sit on the grass and they call their teachers by their first names and they just, you know, drink soy milk and they have to, <laughs> they, whatever it is they do. I, hope I don't they know. Don't drink soy milk. Uh, well, see, that's all they do. Yeah, yeah. They do. They make little you know, dandelions in their hair uh -huh. and they look at the clouds. Um, but then the the they get to like year seven. Or sorry, no. So in high schools, when they when they go to those high schools, they get to like year eleven and twelve, and then it's like, all right, you guys actually need to sit like normal exams now. And a lot of them, I think, freak out because like, oh shit, I'm totally not prepared for this. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know, man. It seems that that year eleven, twelve admission into uni is kind of the crucial point. Mm. So I feel like something needs to be done there. From but the if top they down. want to go to uni as well, if they want to go, to uni. if they want to go, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's like, well, how how relevant are unis right now? Exactly. Like, yeah. Like I mean, how many people do you know studied and do not do their degree? Yeah. Yeah. And I think there needs to be a conversation earlier before they start to go onto their path of uni. I've always been – the bottom line for me with education is know the day-to-day -day of the job that you're studying for. Right. Yeah, that's good. Because if you know the day-to-day, -day, then – you will be able to go, yeah, fuck yeah, I still want to study for that. Mm. Like nursing, it's like you're going to get urine thrown at you. And that bag. They don't tell you that at nursing school. Yeah, no. Yeah. You're going to be cleaning shit off mm -hmm. of the floor. You're going to be looking after patients that are probably not going to be around the next day. Mm. You know, and that that's worst case scenario. There's always there's also a best case scenario. There's also good stuff. Yeah. Like it's fulfilling, it's rewarding. Um, 
you feel like you make a difference, you meet people, you know, and, and yeah, mm. you, you know, you, you, you mend someone back to good health. Yeah. You know, that sounds amazing. Mm. But then it's like, would you, would, would one outweigh the other? Yeah. And if the negative outweighs the positive or whichever line that you draw. For me, it's if I can put up with shit and there's only less, if there's less than 20% that is just fucked, that I yeah. can't be fucked with. That's okay. Mm. If that 80% good drops below 80%, can't of, do it. no, I get, I, it starts to eat away and the other l worst part about the job becomes more amplified. And then five years down the track, I'm Just out. It. And yeah. that's what I'm seeing people do. They, they chase the money. Mm. And this is why they say, especially for teachers, don't chase the money, don't chase the holidays. And same with FIFO workers, don't chase the 120 grand package that you're going to get within a couple of years of finishing school. And, mm. and that's bullshit because then they get the golden handcuffs, also known as a mortgage. Yeah. Not saying that it's bad debt, but if they don't pay themselves, future selves first through the, um, the ETFs and stuff, yep. they're fucked. Absolutely. That, I think that that's a hard, uh, as a teacher as well, you, you probably face this a bit being in WA. Having students who are like, but sir, why do I need to listen to this? My dad's making 200 grand a year working at, you know, Gina's mine. Why do I need to pay attention in class? I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to, you know, leave school, go work in the mines. Like yeah. So there's three, there's three ways I would restructure. Yeah. Three things I would restructure about the education system. First thing is self-awareness slash self uh, kind of, uh, what's the word? You, self, you love, you, you're ingrained. You're enjoying yourself. You're uh, believing in yourself. Yeah. Um, self. Fuck. What is it? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> self. Yeah. That, okay. So self awareness is the big one. Self awareness. Yes. And then you've got uh, self aff affirmation. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to figure that word. What is that? There is another word. There is. I studied another. words at high uni as well, and I can't. Yeah, know, but I it's it's pretty much self belief. Yeah. Okay. Right. Self belief. And, um, man, I always get this. Then the th second one is financial fitness. Yes. So that's Which you where do not learn at all. At that's school. where maths is the most important thing, right, yeah. in, in that department. Every other maths out there is secondary to financial maths, in yeah. my opinion, right? Yeah. Um, yes, there's measurement maths for builders and things like that. Mm. Um, but as a whole, maths is a great tool to learn how to problem solve. Mm. You get the variables. You find the equation, you put the variables in the equation, you solve it. Yep. And then you check if you fucked it or not, right? And then you just do that again and again and again. Same with, same with uh, and then science comes in and you, you learn how to change variables and experiment. Yep. You know, the 80-20 thing. But after those first two pillars of self-awareness and um, fit, ah, fortune, financial fitness, yeah. which leads to financial freedom, You've got pivoting. Pivoting is you changing jobs whenever you want mm. or, or knowing the strategy behind six, 12 months from wherever you want to be. Say old mate goes, why do I have to pay attention in class? My dad works for Gina's mines, make 220K. Mm. I'm going to do the same thing. Great, do that. Five years from now, please make sure that if you don't want to do it anymore, you know all you need to know about financial fitness because once you become more self-aware later on, because you didn't try to do it now, yep. you'll be able to pivot out of that job without going, fuck, I need to stay there because I'm paying for my house and I've got kids and jet skis and Hiluxes and shit. You need to know how to get out of it because mm. you've got your rest of your life to do whatever you want. And if you go all in and then realize your day-to-day -day sucks in your mining FIFO life, it's not the best at all. It's not the best at all. I think kids uh, definitely need to, our education now I think needs to be tailored more to a fluid environment, like a changing, adapting environment, right? Mm. So the way sort of our parents I think were brought up was very much like you will learn at school, you'll go to uni or you'll study a trade and you'll do that for like 60 years and you'll die. No right? good, no good. Exactly. It's like that's all you're learning and then you do that one thing and that's it, right? Yeah. I think now it's like learn like how to learn and learn how to change and learn how to adapt and, and have the, the skills pivot. to be able to do that, to pivot, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's a good point because, 
you know, you're going to have these careers. How many people do you know that just do one thing and stuck to one thing? It's like, no, nah, they do a bit of this, they do a bit of that, they move on to this. It's a changing environment. And exponentially, technology is making it that this job might not exist in two years, you know? Uh, technology will overtake this. So as things rapidly change, as our technology is rapidly changing, as if we would not need to rapidly change and learn how to, you know, yeah, pivot, go into different places, learn different things. I think that's, yeah, that's a, a, that should be a very big priority. Let's make it happen because I don't see the uh, it changing much yet. It's a slow beast. It's In Europe, Europe big... they're doing it. Finland, they're doing it. They are, yeah. And I wonder why. I mean, they just got more like risk tolerant governments that uh, they'll experiment and try things. The yeah. population's got to have something to do with it as well. But that's where you know the whole you need to do eighty percent what works, twenty percent experiment. Yeah. Retire stuff that is just redundant now. Yeah. Or is no longer I evolvable, mm -hmm. and bring in the new stuff that is working, catered to especially the digital age. Mm. Like I worked at a school that had bring your own devices, great, um, but the kids are fucking around on them. And I'm not saying no good for bring your own devices. I pivoted straight away. Yeah, I recorded um, lessons of me in front of the classroom before the kids come in because I learned this on TikTok. I know that the kids consume shit better on, on the screens than they do in real life because that's how they were brought up. They're brought up sitting in a pram whilst their mum gets fucking avo smash that needs to be instead put into the mortgage. Yeah. And that kid's not doing anything remotely social apart from the just zombie going iPad. zombie iPad. Then I they get to school and they're like, I've got an iPad. I know how to use it. And they're yeah. fucking gurus at it. They, oh, they know. They know how to go get download VPNs and shit. <laughs> And then, like, I, I, I backfired one of them as well because I got one of the little um, anti sort of devices. Oh, I forget, yeah. forget what it's called, but I had access to all the students' iPads. Nice. And I'd be going in my spare time, going into a room and seeing which one's fucking around. Oh, really? One kid would be on Minecraft. You could do that? Yeah. Damn. One kid on Minecraft, and I'd just like look at him, figure out which kid it is, and then just go block. <laughs> <laughs> nice. As a teacher, that is, yeah, that is a satisfying yeah. thing. But they figured out how to block that as well. They're wild, man. They're wild. And then I was the same at school. Like, mm. I remember when I was back in my day. Back in. Back we didn't have young. iPads. Us millennials. You're yeah. Old. How old are you? 20, 31. 31. Yeah. yeah. So I remember, shout outs to Peter, the IT guy. I hope he's still around. We went to the computer lab mm. and uh, they'd install these flashy new computers and they had mini clip on them. You know, oh, the classic. The classic mini video clip. games on the browsers. The predicting games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then they also had um, – has that one binned it? Okay. They also had um, little um, little like kind of time-based games and the time-based games were um, – huh? Are we good? The time-based games were um, like like it's something mafia or something where you, t uh, you, you, you put in an action and you can come back to it later on at, at another time. You can sign out and mm. t it's time-based. There was something called O Game. It's like about planets and shit. Okay. Anyway, I was obsessed with all of these. But the ones that I really got into were the mini clips because they were quicker, quick dopamine mm. and shit. And um, the, uh, the IT guy would uh, take over my computer and he would open the notepad up and said, you should be working. Oh, really? And I could see that come They've up. They've got as that kind of access. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. control your desktop. Yeah. This really? was back in like 2008. Oh, that was early. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then I figured out, okay, I'm going to log in. And I'm going to load up all the mini clips yeah. and uh, I'm going to take the Ethernet cord out at the back and just <laughs> play on the mini clips because I don't give a fuck about high scores. I just want to play. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't know that I'm uh, on there because he can't access the computer. I've taken that privilege oh, out. Smooth. Next week he stalls the cameras. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> he brought new technology to his school because you're cheekiness. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right. That's it. Um, but, we're lucky, man, in that as millennials we, uh, we grew up like, I feel like we were the first generation to know like, what it was like without it. Yes, that. But also, like, we have grown up with rapidly changing technology. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, mm. like, we are more adapted to the next wave of changing, well, the ongoing yeah. wave of changing yeah. technology because we, we're used to it. Like, cool, we went from floppy disks to CDs. Cool. We, we used that. That's what kind of what happens, yeah. you know? Whereas Gen X... You know, for them, it was like you know, whatever was big at the time, they got used to it. They went through their crucial years with that. And then all this new shit comes about. And they're like, well, I don't know how to deal with this. Well, 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 you know, that's why Gen X and before have no the idea what's boomers. going on. Yeah. The boomers, yeah. 
because yeah. they just they, they they did not grow up in those crucial years while things were rapidly changing. So now that's going to happen to us next. The millennials now. No, are I'm the saying that we've gateway. got skills. To yeah. just, we're fine. We're, we're the we gateway. Can, yes, we're the connect. We're the gateway drug. We're the yeah, connect. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so the Zeds and the Alphas coming up. Everyone born past 2010. Yeah. Um, they are, have an iPad in their hands, straight out of the womb. Bang! Here's your it. iPad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Away you go. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I figured out I'm going to create content for them within the classroom. So what happened was they would come in and I would just press play. There's me on the TV. Oh, Steph's on the TV. Sick. They'd start watching it. Really? They consume it. Yeah. Well, you're just sitting there. And I'm standing at the back with the iPad remote pausing it and stuff. I get to reflect on it. I get to build on it and uh, pause at any time. Or if I let it run, anyone else to disengage, I'd be going up to them and going, you can't disrupt me, but I'm here to help. And then, not only that, because they had their own devices, if they yeah. couldn't keep up with the pace of the video in front of the class with everybody else, headphones in, they're consuming it at their own pace. Yeah, right. So I cloned myself twice over. There was That's three of me. Yeah. And then you're just behavior management, basically, at the back. Yeah. You're well, just, and you're watching their screen. Behavior management, but also one-on-one -on -one with people that need that attention, like, still. How often did you do this? Uh, this was 2020. I did this right. as much as humanly possible because I had the time to do it with the one class that I had. Oh, you only had one class. And I, yeah, because yeah. 2020 was when I decided to bin the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and do my... Little smaller um, load. But I stayed in to survive. Yeah. Um, and then that's when I figured it out. And I was like, why is... Like, Pithesias have done this in the past, mm. but not on this level, I don't think. I've never seen it before. I was like, on the, on the front wall, you cater to maybe 30% of the class. Yeah. The other 70%, maybe 60% of them want to do it at their own pace. Yeah. They can pause it, rewind it. They have control because that's how they're used to it. Yeah, and yeah. the other 10%, give or take, are the ones that still need their hand held. And you're there. And I'm there. That That is so – that's like a, you know, gutturally you're like, oh, that's so weird. Like it's like a dystopian future where, you know, you're not even – you're not there teaching. But, bro, if it works. Well, that's how – If results driven it. and this shit works yeah. and they're actually paying attention, then – What's the problem? That's how universities do it. And that's how yeah. people, people uh, that sell courses do it. Mm. What you do is, oh, you want to learn how to create this? You want to do this online? Here's a Kajabi course. Learn all these basic steps that I just keep repeating myself with everyone anyway. Yeah. And then when you need tailored help, you come to me as a higher ticket item. Yeah, right. That's how the adults learn. Why the fuck would we not put that for the kids? Oh, they're not emotionally mature enough yet. Yeah, because you haven't been focusing on their self-awareness first. Mm. Once they're more self-aware, they're more invested in what they want to learn. Yeah. Because they they have something of interest that they, they want to learn. Not the fuck Pythagoras theorem or the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And <laughs> Everyone knows that one. All that so. shit, you know. And and they, 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 they can argue and say, hey, I am, you know, the school system helps discover that. Yeah. But every year it's the same shit. Mm. It's the same shit. Do you think university will get to a point that it's not relevant? Like, depends. Depends what, on the what, profession. What can you learn at uni that you can't learn from some Indian dude on a tutorial on YouTube? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. pretty much everything I've ever learned so about lawyers, cameras, about filming. Lawyers, doctors. I know the exact guy too. Yeah. Lawyers, doctors, <laughs> um, teachers maybe. Would uh, need to in person? Mm. I mean, oh, bro! If you're a doctor, you need you yeah, need to cut up yeah, your yeah. body. You can't. But that's practical as well. But you yeah. still need to make sure you understand the anatomy and shit like that before you get a surgery. Most of it could probably be done online. Yeah. Yeah. But again, there's an accountability factor, mm. and there's a way that people like kind of fake it as well, which is not good. Yeah. You need to have specific professionals that can pa fail or pass those people because yeah. otherwise it's dangerous, right? Of course. But yeah, um, and then there's a few other things. Uh, I mean, engineers uh, mm -hmm. as well. But I guess the the big thing I like about universities is the accountability factor. It weeds mm. out the 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 ones that are pretenders. They they bail out. Yes. Right. The tragic ones are the ones that do the whole thing because they either have tiger parents or that they think that this is their life now. Yeah. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, but I think. It will become. It will still be relevant, just less relevant, if people are honed in more on their self awareness earlier, mm -hmm. so that they go, you know what, I don't want to be a nurse. 
I have an auntie who's a nurse. I did some work experience with her for a week. Mm -hmm. Fuck that shit. They got piss thrown at me. I'm just I'm first, sick of washing yeah. my hair every night. Yeah. yeah, the first two days were amazing. It mm -hmm. was so good. By the end of it, I was fucked. I don't yeah. want to do that for the rest of my that life. That is a stressful job. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's like, and again, I'm not like, you can discover it whilst you're in the job. You can mm -hmm. use, you, like I did. I, I studied for four years, went and taught for three years. And after seven years, I'm still using the degree technically. You yeah. know, I've, 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 cre I've learned skills from it yeah. that I'm teaching. Exactly. And I can build relationships uh, really easily with kids, building that rapport to then help them realize what they want. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm. Within the school system, not so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a lot more constrictive. It all comes down to self-awareness and reflecting back of what you learned in that time. And don't completely throw it away unless it's something completely out of interest to you, absolutely without doubt. Like, no, yeah, these last few years, I have no interest in it whatsoever. Yep. You need to bail straight away. Mm. And kids are not doing it, mm -hmm. which is bullshit. I like that that self awareness point is good. Yeah, just but I wonder because there's there's also like you know people who I don't know if that can be taught, but people who just change their mind like so many times. Like I didn't mm. know what I wanted to do until you know obviously recently, really. Um, but I even during uni, like I changed degrees once or twice. I know dudes who changed like five times. Like man, like how do you? I don't know. Everyone's kind of develops at a different pace, but I think you're right. Maybe schools could somehow help with that more. You know, where it's like yeah. I don't know, try more things, have a have a, 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 a smorgasbord of things to try. That's it. And then and then figure out what you like to do and then really cultivate that. Yeah. But um and, and not be afraid to change your mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you could give, we'll wrap it up now. Cause yes. uh, I think we've gone well over time, which mm -hmm. is fine. Um my car's just getting towed right yeah. now. So. If you could give advice to anybody about anything based off of your life experience, what would it be so far? Man, I think the 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 main thing is, it's, it's kind of cliche, but it really is a case of just figure out what you love doing and do it as best as you can and have, have, like, have a safety, have a backup, but for the rest of your life, pursue what it is you enjoy doing most, you know? Do it smart and be good at it. Don't just do it. If, you're, you know, if you enjoy it, get good at it. That's, that's it. If you like something, get good at it and do it for the rest of your life. That's all I've got to say. Don't be a little bitch either. Don't be a little bitch. That's the main <laughs> thing, all right? <laughs> all right, Adrian, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, mate. We'll, it's been a pleasure. we'll find you on the onlines and on the uh, socials, Adrian Alaberg. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good thanks.